The economy wasn't the only thing talked about in Brussels today. France has accused Britain of poaching jobs and has demanded EC legislation to stop it happening again. The row began when the American-owned firm Hoover said last month that it would move production of its vacuum cleaners from Dijon to Scotland with a loss of hundreds of jobs. French ministers are saying that Britain's refusal to endorse the Maastricht Treaty's social chapter means it can undercut costs elsewhere in Europe. The French foreign minister, Roland Dumas, said the incident was a serious problem. He said employment cannot be created by unfair aid and people outbidding each other. France has now asked the European Commission to investigate whether the move has broken EC laws on state subsidies and employee rights. Kirsty Lang reports on how the move has affected workers on both sides of the employment divide. It's night nice duty on the picket line for Alain and Joël, both workers at the Hoover plant outside Dijon. Both men started work here on the same day ten years ago, and like their colleagues, can't quite believe what's happened to them. The 700 workers walked out last Monday when they were told that Hoover had earmarked their factory for closure and that their jobs would be transferred to the plant in Scotland. I'm really sad because I've been here for 10 years and it's awful to be thrown out just like that. My wife and I both work here. We've got two small children, so this means we will have to make big sacrifices. We won't be able to give the kids what we'd like to. Back at Alain's house, he and Joël talk through their prospects for the future. The outlook's bleak. Unemployment in the area is running at 10%. Both men are married with two children and have mortgages to pay. Theirs was until now a comfortable life and they feel they've been undercut by the Scottish workers. I'm angry at the Scots for accepting this deal. I know they had a knife to their throat, but you shouldn't just accept anything. We shouldn't prostitute ourselves for work. This was one of three Hoover plants in Europe. In this tough economic climate, the company decided that one of them had to go. France's strict labor laws and the higher cost of social charges made Dijon the obvious victim. There was little warning, no negotiations with the unions. When the news was broken to them by a Scottish journalist, they got up and walked out. An appel à un groupe de travail qui se joint à l'équipe de Daniel Lavergne. At the daily strike meeting, union leaders read out messages of support from French politicians. Their cause is seen as a vote winner in a hard-fought election campaign. The American multinational has provided an easy hate figure, but their anger is also directed at the British. When we talk about a social Europe, we mean all European nations. If one refuses to accept this, then barriers should be put up so social dumping cannot take place. Otherwise, in 10 years' time, the UK will become a pool of cheap labour like Southeast Asia. Back in the factory social club, many of Alain's colleagues say that in spite of all the brave words, they would have accepted a 25% pay cut from Hoover rather than see the factory close. In fact, wages in France are not much higher than those in Scotland, but the devaluation of the pound and the higher social charges make these workers more expensive. Dijon exudes prosperity. Well-dressed citizens browse in smart boutiques. But all this marks a deeper anxiety. Unemployment is beginning to bite here. It's the number one issue in the election campaign. And with 30% of investment in the area coming from abroad, they're particularly vulnerable to the whims of the multinationals. It's hard to underestimate the anger caused here by the closure of the Hoover factory. And it's not just about job losses. Dijon is at the geographical centre of the community, and this has shaken the French vision of Europe, a vision of nations united not just by a common market, but by common social values, which explains why what should have just been a local story about redundancies has gone on to make front-page news in France and has had reverberations throughout the European community. French Minister Jean-Pierre Soissons has denounced the Hoover affair as highway robbery. His government is now demanding that the EC introduce legislation to stop one member state poaching jobs from another. We shouldn't be taking away something from one region in order to give it to another. The regions and countries of Europe should stick together in order to reinforce our position in the world and speak with one voice. I think they're just uh, calling sour grapes now because they see that we've won this contest in a fair fight. 
We gave regional assistance for it on a scheme that operates throughout the United Kingdom. But I understand the French actually offered rather more in regional assistance uh, had the company gone to France. Clearly, Scotland was more competitive. Clearly, Hoover, just like other international companies, recognised Scotland's qualities as a base for the single European market. But the French say it's the refusal by Britain to sign the social chapter of the Maastricht Treaty that gives them the advantage. The chapter guaranteed certain minimum rights for workers, including health and safety regulations, social benefits and trade union rights. I've known some companies to give a little bit of weight to the social charter at the margin of their location decisions. The reasons these companies give weight to the social charter concerns the requirements to have works councils, which involves um, employee consultation procedures, and also the restrictions on overtime and shift working, which are implicit in the social charter. Here at Merthyr Tydfil is Hoover's European headquarters. They're surprised at the outcry caused by their decision. The tough economic climate, they say, calls for painful decisions. We chose Scotland first because there was space available to combine all of our production into one facility. And second, because the total cost of operating in Scotland were less than any of the alternatives we considered, including combining operations in France. Hoover is one of the many foreign companies to see the advantages of investing in Britain. In 1991, over $21,000 million were invested in the UK, compared to over $11,000 million in France and 2,000 million in Germany. One of the reasons Hoover gave for their move is the lower social charges employers must pay on top of salaries. In the UK, the extra charges amount to 14.7%, whereas in France, they're 33%, and in Germany, 24%. Campus Lang on the outskirts of Glasgow, and the contrast with Dijon couldn't be more stark. Little sign of prosperity here, the unemployment rate is way above the national average. Unlike Dijon, Cambuslang is classed as a declining industrial area by the EC, making it eligible for regional aid. The 400 jobs that will be created by closing the Dijon plant are desperately needed. For those already working here, the New Deal will mean a pay cut. But many, like Jim McIntosh, who's been at the plant for 24 years, believe they had little choice but to accept. If we rejected it, the factory would close down. And that was the way it was put to the workforce. Eddie made it no doubt that uh, if we reject this deal, the factory will close down. We'll go and offer the same deal to D John. And if D John accepts it, that's we're on 90 days' notice. Union convener Eddie McAvoy persuaded his colleagues to accept the deal. He dismisses charges of a sellout, arguing that the French unions have not helped them in the past. I think the workers are pleased with a situation that's protected a thousand jobs. It's created the opportunity for 400 jobs. When you look at the last 10 years, then this area alone, we've had three major companies transferred their work from Scotland to France. Again, I'll repeat the point. We didn't hear the French politicians complaining in 1980 when 300 Cambridge Lang jobs were transferred to Dijon. In this working men's club in Cambuslang, the Hoover deal is one of the main topics of conversation. The 400 new jobs it'll bring may be temporary contracts with no pension and limited sick pay, but at least they're jobs. Jim is out for a drink with his brother-in-law, Walter. He's depressed about accepting the deal and sorry that 700 Frenchmen lost their jobs as part of the bargain. Newsnight decide to bring Joel and Alain from the Dijon plant to Canvas Lang. Last night, we took them to the club to meet Jim and his colleagues. <laughs> After the friendly greetings, Joel told Jim who he blamed for their situation. It's the multinational. They're playing off French workers against Scottish workers. Then Alan presented Jim with a letter from the French workers. It regretted that the Scots had allowed themselves to be bullied into accepting such a deal. It's in the French, and I know where I'm kidding on, I can read French, you know. In spite of the language barrier, Jim did attempt to explain the problems they faced. In the end, he said it was a question of you or us. But then, over a couple of drinks, both sides began to understand each other a little better. Trollers, even though I can't even speak their language. A lot of sympathy with them. They look exactly the same as me. 
They look the same, only they don't talk the same language as the guy I would expect to get down here a pint with, down the local. This afternoon, before returning home, Alain and Joël wanted to see the factory to which their jobs were being transferred. As foreign ministers met to discuss the closure of their plant, the two men wondered what sacrifice they'd be prepared to make to find another job. Kirsty Lang reporting.